All right, so now I'm gonna demonstrate how we actually mount this interlock to the uh, landing door. Here's our uh, landing door. And in this case, it's a right hand strike. And that's how this uh, interlock is uh, configured is as a right hand strike. If the door were to swing the other way, you uh, don't have to change uh, interlocks. All you have to do is turn this plate 180 degrees. So you just uh, take off these four screws on the back, flip the, uh, uh, the plate and it will mount to the other side. All right, but it's already configured for this. And essentially what we'll be doing is taking this, placing it up in the, uh, the upper corner of the uh, elevator uh, door frame, feeding the wire up into the frame itself, and then fastening it on, into the, uh, uh, the back side of the frame. Let's go around the other side. So typically you're going to have some good uh, studs all around the frame and a good header up above, and there's plenty of mounting holes uh, within this plate so you should be able to get some uh, uh, some good wood to uh, to screw in there okay so utilize as many of the, the screw holes as are needed to line up with the uh, the studs and and get a good firm hold on the uh, on this interlock so that should be very very solid not moving at all and then the uh, the face of the door should be coming within about a 16th or so of the face of this, uh, of this interlock. If, if you do truly have your three quarter inch rule, you'll be very close to that. There is a little bit of a play with the keeper, but, uh, but not much given the, the small space that we're working with. Now the keeper is going to come with a, uh, a uh, plastic piece around it, a spacer that is used just for installation purposes. What you do is slide it into the into the interlock so that it's in the, the right position here and that, that uh, spacer will keep it centered within the hole. And then I recommend that you use a, uh, a, a drill to, do a, to drill a pilot hole. I already have the holes uh, drilled out so uh, I'm going to just insert the screws. But uh, you would typically drill a pilot hole and then, and then insert your screws. You want to be careful not to tighten down too much on the top screw because uh, there, there is an opening on there. Okay, so just enough to, to get that on there firmly. And then to open this up. We can take this plastic off now and you can see the keep will come squarely into the center of the interlock. Now, the, it does, the interlock does deal with that, that eighth inch of tolerance that's all the way around it, but it, it's going to be uh, ideal to get it to come in directly within that, that gap, and that's where this thing comes in. Okay, so now we have this mechanically uh, installed. The, uh, the keeper's installed on the door, the interlock's installed on the uh, door frame, and I just wired this up. Inside the, the box with the interlock, you're going to have a, uh, basically a data sheet for the, for the interlock. And on the back side of that is a simple wiring diagram. So this interlock, what's, what's different about the wiring from any other interlock is that this does require 24 volt and ground signal at all times. So because of the way that, that the interlock latches and unlatches, um, it doesn't use a spring or a solenoid. It uses a linear actuator, which requires power even when there isn't a, a power going to the actual unlock signal or solenoid signal. So you'll have the, the black wire and the white wire supply power at all times to the interlock. The white wire uh, is your plus 24 volts. The black wire is a ground. And then the remaining wires will be your typical uh, interlock wires. Uh, and actually the, the color coding is pretty typical as well. The uh, brown is your solenoid signal or your open signal. Blue is the, the common for that uh, or ground. And then, uh, then your door close and door lock circuits are also on here. Uh, essentially, we, we typically send this with, the, uh, uh, with those in series. So you'll see a, um, a uh, jumper between the yellow and orange, essentially putting the door lock and door close in series. And you'll hook up the green and the red to, uh, to your controller as your door closed door lock. And of course, that's all right here in the, uh, in the schematic.
All right, so now we have this powered up. Uh, there's a, uh, a call button right here on this side, which will uh, uh, simulate placing a call and holding the solenoid signal for about 10 seconds. You can see this is the, the manual release latch. So if somebody didn't need to get out of the cab, they can just lift up on this and uh, open the door. So that will release the, that will release the latch for the, uh, for the door. And close that. And uh, if I hit the call, it's going to lift up that latch, unlock the door. Now, the, uh, uh, the solenoid signal is going to hold for about 10 seconds, okay? Uh, I'll tell you when that, uh, that solenoid signal actually turns off. It just turned off now, and uh, you notice that the latch did not drop. Now, that because of the compact nature of this interlock, um, there's, once that latch drops, this, this door cannot close. So it's going to wait, even though it lost the solenoid signal, it's going to wait uh, to latch it until the door closes. And the way, and so I'll demonstrate that here. Once it closes, now the, the latch comes down. I'm going to unlock this again and show you why. So if you look on the, uh, the lower part of this interlock, there's a small rectangular indentation there. There's actually a, a magnet built in there, a rare earth magnet with a high <laughs> intensity uh, uh, magnetism. So that, that will uh, be picked up by a magnetic sensor in here telling the, the, the interlock essentially that the door is closed. So once I close that, it senses that and it will lock for us. Now, if I, if I just leave it in there, um, it's still going to stay unlocked for that 10 seconds until the solenoid signal goes away. But as soon as that solenoid signal goes away, it will lock and uh, we're off and running. Once that happens, our switches, we have a, a door close switch right here inside and we have a door lock switch inside here. Uh, and uh, that will will be fed back to the uh, controller, and we're off and running.